This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit. Hey folks, we're starting YouTube memberships. If you want access to emojis, polls, behind-the-scenes videos, and other perks, check out and see if you want to become a member. And we got some Midwest cons coming up. Hope to see you there. Faster than a speeding bullet. I swear that never happens. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. But he can also fly, so it's a tad less impressive when you know that. Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! No, I'm not looking up for any of those things. It's Super Month! Okay, thank you so much. We'll let you know. Man, I didn't know there was a Superwoman. I thought there was just Supergirl. Yeah, and it's Lois Lane. That's crazy. <laughs> Next! And you are? Superboy. That's not awfully PC. What about super person or super other man? Man, I didn't know there was a super boy. And there did my spell check because when I wrote the script, it came up as spelled wrong. Okay, tell us about yourself. Well, some people confuse me for a younger version of Superman, but that's not true. You see, Hello, I'm the Nostash Crook. I remember so you don't have to. But the first two Superman movies being such big hits, we're trying to see what character should be in the third one. While well, Superman's character lineup isn't quite as well known as, say, Batman's lineup, the movies show they can be adapted in an entertaining way. And there's plenty of interesting villains and companions to choose from. Some impressive and epic, while others... Crypto. But bottom line, there was a lot of potential waiting to be discovered by a big screen audience. So we're seeing which ones make the most sense for Superman 3. Thank you so much, we'll be in contact. All right, let's see, the next one is named Brainiac. <laughs> Uh, have you been helped? Oh, I'm Gus Gorman. I'm here to try out for the Superman movie. Oh, well, uh, what's your history in the comic? I have no history. Well, what about who you work for? They have no history. Well, what are they like? Well, you know Lex Luthor and Miss Tessmacher? Yeah? These are lame versions of them. Oh, and he has a sister that's just the ugliest. Oh, God, too ugly. Take her away. I mean, she's not that bad. If Medusa had a sister, and that sister was burned by ugly fire- I'm sorry, why do you want to be in a Superman movie? Superman? I love Superman! When he comes in with the, whoa! The laser beam eyes and the batarangs, na 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 Throwing lassos and he's amazing! Superman! I'm sorry, we're gonna have to pass. Wait, wait, I see potential here. You see potential in that? Endless buildings and- I don't know why, but I just see world's best stand-up comedian in the sky. I don't know why either. Can't you see him on the poster that years later people will swear was AI generated? I could see people confusing it for a parody movie. I just think it'd be fun to destroy something beautiful. Oh, oh, it's my cape. It's my cape. Maybe if- WILL YOU SHUT UP?! Not until you put me in the movie! Okay, fine. Just leave! Got it. Oh, you have a door. Yeah, so? You know what I love about doors? Don't answer that, it's a trick. What? They open and close. They open and close. They open and close! This is Superman 3. Will you get the hell out of here? <laughs> Superman! smash hits of Superman 1 and 2, the replacement director from the last film came in to continue their success with Superman 3. And when I say success, I mainly mean the suck part. After we got one of the greatest superhero sequels of all time, it only figures we get one of the worst superhero sequels of all time. No, really, it's been called that a lot. With an unfocused plot, essential characters given a backseat, and an absolute assassination of comedy from a brilliant comedian, Richard Pryor. Pryor was a huge star, both in stand-up and the movie scene. And he took the part thinking there would be a bit more drama to the role. He quickly discovered, though, not only did they want him to be comic relief, but all the staples of his brilliant humor were going to be stripped away for... whatever this is. But to just blame Pryor for the film's failure would be like blaming Jake Lloyd for Phantom Menace or Sofia Coppola for Godfather 3. There are a ton of other factors that make this an absolute disaster. And we're sadly gonna look over them here today. So let's take a look at this laugh riot. Hey, critic, I really think you're missing some great comedy out here. I mean, his cape is pink. Superman's cape is not pink. It's so wacky. Get out of here! Let's take a look at Superman 3. Next. 
Name? Sorry, I put on the beginning of Bustin' Loose. Yeah, would you even guess this was a superhero movie? Or any comic book movie for that matter? It's just Pryor playing a character named Gus trying to get a job from a Chuck Jones caricature here. They expect you to learn that stuff in one day. Hold the lettuce, hold Mr. the ketchup. Can I have some sauce, please? I don't want any sauce. Sir, we're trying to film a Superman flick. Please step aside. Do you know what you are? Don't call me a bum. I'm not a bum. I was gonna say making the toy look like a comedic masterpiece, but bum is good. To hell with those epic opening titles in space. This sequel opens literally walking over the names of Superman and Richard Pryor. Can't get more fitting than that. <laughs> This whole intro is done like a silent comedy if it was played at half speed. All the timing is painfully off. Though maybe that's because you can't make out half of it because the lower portion is so blurry you'd swear you're wearing bifocals. Hey, you're supposed to be in a Batman movie, little fella. Well, I saved the day. Back on the street you go to cause an accident. The payoff isn't even that great. Superman saves one guy and then the slapstick just keeps going. Wouldn't it make more sense if he had a solution that solved every problem, like putting everyone in trouble on a truck and lifting them out of the chaos over into one street over? And maybe they start causing chaos in that street too? I don't know, it's not a great conclusion, but this doesn't even conclude, it just moves on to something else! Even they have a look like- Was there a human mousetrap game going on for six minutes? No, I remember joy coming from that game. Meanwhile, the Daily Planet talks about a humanitarian of the year named Ross Webster. Ooh, he is good looking. Now, who's this other woman? That's his sister. Picture looks fuzzy. The picture's fine. She looks like that in real life. Wait, 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 wait. Absolute knockout. Something wrong with the camera. Both these two could be on the cover of absolutely no impression monthly. I don't know why the idiot in circulation Morning, everybody. Doesn't... Hi, Clark. Hi, Lois. Morning, Jimmy. I just recorded my lines via Skype this morning. Excuse me, Mr. Clark is going to Smallville for a high school reunion while Lois is going on vacation because she wants nothing to do with this movie. Bye! Bye! Bye. 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 There's rumors that because she was so vocal about Downer being cut from the other movie that her part was trimmed in this. But apparently she had other projects, which if you look at her IMDb, does check out. And the producer said her and Clark's relationship had nowhere else to go. Yeah, that's why they dropped that romance so quick in the comics too. Either way, after seeing the film, Kidder's reaction to being in it so little was... Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meanwhile, Gus gets a job as a computer programmer giving Office Space their plot. They can't be bothered to collect a half cent from your paycheck any more than you could. No, really, the makers of Office Space said they actually got the idea for stealing a small amount of money from people's paychecks from Superman 3. So okay, that and this meme are the only things we can thank this movie for. And on Clark's way to Smallville, there's trouble at a chemical plant. Okay, that was a surprisingly good effect! <laughs> he saves the people, but finds a room with an experimental acid that can't be abandoned. That's concentrated belfry acid. What does it do? Weird comic book stuff. Will it come in later? At no other point except literally the last minute of the climax. Sounds good. Help me! Superman! Here we go. This is so much better than saving Lois. Apparently her and my relationship had nowhere to go but me and Jimmy? That chemistry we can still work off of! Actually, most of the romance is around Clark and his old high school friend Lana Lang, played by Annette O'Toole, who I do give credit is not only from the comic, but also from the first film. I know it's a weird thing to praise, but seeing how they just make up whoever they want now, I'll give credit when they have a good callback. <laughs> Crotch! This is the first time, excuse me, you've come back to this little bird since your mom passed away. Yeah. Oh, pff, guess his mom's dead. The father dying is a huge character-defining moment, but the mother passing is barely a comic book asterisk. Thanks for helping me out. <laughs> you kidding, Lana? He helps Lana clean up after the party, and they catch up on old times. You know, years later, you can look at someone and think, how much they really look like Superman. Meanwhile, in Pleasantville, Jesus, somebody get laid so we can see more color. We see our villains Ross, played by Robert Vaughn, his sister Vera, played by Annie Ross, and Lorelai, played by Pamela Stevenson. Baba, I will not let this woman have the right with closed, ears open. She's a big pig! You go back to working with Dr. Evil and you go back to dating Mickey Mouse! Kiss the 85 thou uh, goodbye? They find out about Gus's computer scheme and rather than turn him in, they invite him to help out with their evil plans. I know that you're a man of compassion and you have pity and I don't want to go to jail because they have robbers and rapists. Is it weird that that's the second PG Superman movie to use that word? Computers rule the world today. 
And the fellow that can fool the computer can rule the world himself. I will say the bad guy's plan to control all computers predicting they're going to be an even bigger thing in the future is weirdly ahead of its time. But kind of in the same way the box scheme in Batman Forever was ahead of its time. Everything else about the villains are still pretty dumb. You didn't tell me your mother was going to be here. It is not enough that I succeed. Everyone else must fail. Morlax tried to use his brain to rise from the sewers and achieve powers and riches. This guy is already rich and powerful. And on top of that, boring. His first big scheme centers around coffee. You know what I want now? No. I want coffee. Destroy the entire Colombian coffee crop right down to the last. Okay, I guess I can't pretend real estate is the most fascinating scheme either, but Lex would have made this interesting. Otis would want his own brand of coffee or something. But that's nothing compared to the amazing subplot of the Daily Planet running their Jingo Bingo. No, really, that's a subplot, and they return to it a lot. It's time for you to draw this month's winning Jingo number. This is the first time I ever won anything. Oh, look, Maury, a native wedding. Get out your wallet, Mr. Ray! <laughs> Mr. White, look what I've got for you. How's it do that? How's it manage to cut from one boring thing to an even more boring thing? Clark hangs with Lana and her son Ricky, and I will admit, I love him wearing the red Smallville sweater with an S on it like a cape, as they try to have a picnic. Hey, Pate. Oh, Clark, that's Buster's dog food. Oh shoot. Well, I have to kiss you now to make you forget that. <laughs> Little Ricky is in trouble, though, and about to get plowed, so Superman goes to save him. Superman? That's me. Wow, they did not do a camera test with him and that kid because they had no connection. It's actually kind of impressive. A little boy and Superman. It is impossible for them not to have chemistry together. This kid's supposed to bring back Superman's humanity later, yet he looks at him like he was hoping for the Green Lantern. Mr. Kent? And of course, Clark returns, but no one can put together their connection. I see Superman every day. Could you get me his autograph? I don't know. If I had a nickel for every time some little kid... Man, that's bad what even the movie is like. Eh, this scene's going nowhere. Just cut away from it. There's no vodka in it! <laughs> oh, now things are funny. We got big hats. You never do pass out, do you? Nope. Gus gets the security guard drunk so he can access... You know, I'll be honest, I don't fully know. This movie is so boring and I try watching so many of these scenes without falling asleep that I actually miss what he's supposed to be doing here. I know you can argue it's unprofessional of me, but I'd rather be called unprofessional than watch any of Superman 3 again. <laughs> Somehow he hacks the computers all throughout the city to be even more unfunny than it already is, which is an impressive feat. <laughs> even the original Ninja Turtles cartoon would look at this and say, dude, you gotta take this more seriously. Gus meets up with Ross and his gang on a building filled with snow. Okay, I'll give you a point for originality on that one. And how do you save money on showing Superman saving the day? Have somebody explain how Superman saved the day. As unfunny as possible. You didn't see the man come flying out of the sky from the clouds. It was him. This goes on for a while, folks. Get comfy. The skate was flapping in the wind. He was flying. He was great. He was just flying around. I'm talking about drying it up like the machines that they have in the men's rooms. You know what I'm talking about? The hot air comes out and you put your hands under there. This is so painful. I feel like the emperor from Amadeus when he's watching the ballet with no music. <laughs> and he landed right in the middle of this big plantation. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. And you think he stood around to take balls? Not this man. With his cape flapping in the what is and this? he checked everything out, right? With his x-ray vision. I don't understand. He made the little in on top of the- Is it modern? <laughs> Just like that! Oh, it's gonna go crazy! <laughs> I've never seen nothing. But Superman- Sally Harry. Put these laser beams out of his eyes on- Do you like this? Flight. He flies off again, right? Then he saw what really caused the trouble, right? Well, no. look at them. Bzzz, dried up everything. Flew into the tornado. <sighs> went down to the bottom of the tornado. Oh, and turned it upside down. Superman's bad. But it has a topper. He skis down the side of the building. <laughs> Literally goofy, 40 years earlier, doing the same thing as saying, oh, I'm embarrassed for you. So again, it's a little confusing, but Gus recreates the formula for kryptonite, but with an unknown element, which they plan to use on Superman, who's being given a hero's welcome for saving Ricky. And in yet another misunderstanding of Richard Pryor's comedy. 
they have him dress up like an army general because they think he's Bugs Bunny. You sit on molded plastic seats! America leads the world in high-grade plastics! My god, you can literally see this scene flatlining even before it's a minute in. We cannot afford a chemical plastics gap! Cause when you put your hand in a pile of goo that used to be the Superman franchise, you'll know who to blame. Thank the Lord for Superman! He gives Superman the kryptonite with nobody questioning what it is and Gus not understanding why it's not working on him. How am I supposed to know what unknown means? Do you know how they're always trying to find the secret recipe in that chicken in the bucket? Am I crazy or is Pryor playing a character he would mock in his stand-up? They try to set him up as a loser who can't get a job but then reveal he's a computer genius. They go back and forth between he can't fool anybody and then he can fool everybody. I don't think anyone knew what this character was outside of Richard Pryor is playing him. And this movie is so bad, even Richard Pryor is doing a pretty poor job playing Richard Pryor. There's been an accident on the Old River Bridge. A trailer truck crashed through the barrier rail. The kryptonite, however, does start to affect Superman as he hears about an emergency, but instead wants to spend time hitting on Lana. Well, there's no rush. It's a bridge. Oh, it's okay. I always get there on time. If I miss it, I gotta work around. No big deal. You know, it's unusual finding a good-looking girl like you alone like this. Reeve actually plays scuzzy Superman pretty well. And maybe the best part of the movie is watching such a pure character start to act threatening. He doesn't even do anything here, yet you swear you're watching a serial killer stalk his next victim. Are you sure you shouldn't do something about the bridge? What bridge? I destroyed it in the two seconds you looked away. He comes to his senses, though, and makes his way to where the disaster already took place. What can I do to help? Not much of anything now. If only you'd got here a minute sooner. I'll get here sooner when you fix this damn door! Alright, time to get the day going. <laughs> that was me, exploding again. Thank God for stamps. You see, after the hype of the new year, we all start to settle into our routines. But for businesses that do a lot of mailing and shipping, you gotta keep moving. Stamps.com streamlines all your mailing and shipping to turbocharge your operational efficiencies. And the Stamps.com app is like a post office in your pocket. Isn't that a crazy thought? A post office can't be in your pocket. But it's like that, symbolically. So you can stay on top of things even if you're always on the go. It's the post office elevated. Postage rates just increased again. Luckily, Stamps.com has the best discounts in the industry. With rates you can't find anywhere else, like up to 89% off USPS and UPS. Plus, Stamps.com automatically tells you your cheapest and fastest shipping options. You don't have to navigate all the different carriers. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over a million businesses, whether they're mailing out checks, invoices, legal documents, books, or anything else. Keep your mailing and shipping moving at the speed of your business with Stamps.com. Sign up at Stamps.com slash nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com slash nostalgia. And you know what? I'm hungry! Factors got you covered. Eating better is easy with Factors delicious, ready-to-eat meals. They just take two minutes. Fuel up fast with Factors restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are. With pancakes, smoothies, and more, you can discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. I'm not even kidding. While I'm not exploding, these meals are really good. They're one of the few ready-to-eat meal deliveries that taste just as good as they look. And when I'm not on fire, they look pretty good. No! There's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. It's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, premium options with no cooking required. So sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. Head to factormeals.com slash nostalgia50 and use the code nostalgia50 to get 50% off. That's code nostalgia50 at factormeals.com slash nostalgia50 to get 50% off. Hey folks, I'll be playing Final Fantasy VII every Friday on Twitch. I've never played a Final Fantasy game before, so I'm excited to see what they're like. Hope to see you there. So you might think this is the beginning of Superman slowly turning evil, bit by bit, losing the humanity that kept him such a decent superhero. 
But no, he's just bad right away. That interesting back and forth between if he should be selfish or noble? That is literally all you get. From here on out, he's just a scumbag. No transition, no complex character study, he's just a dickhole now. I love too, the first bad thing he does is he straightens out the Tower of Pisa. Well, fixing this was a pizza cake. Ha! Even my puns are evil! His second act of menace, blowing out the Olympic torch. These are less evil deeds and more super pranks for a YouTube channel. Speaking of erect torches, while our villains devise an evil plot to seize control of oil tankers, Lorelai tries to get Superman's attention. Don't let me keep you from anything. I'm not in a rush. What did you have in mind? Well, at least we know what the cover of the porno parody will look like. Give me your wired, your whores, your hardened messes. She says if he keeps all the oil tankers in one place, she'll do whatever he wants for him. He complies, and, well, so does she. Cut to a woman-shaped hole through the bottom of the bed. You know, it's funny. Most people love sharing this meme because, well, it's goddamn hilarious. But the funniest part isn't even in the meme. It's not that it's an unshaven Superman getting drunk. It's that it's an unshaven Superman getting drunk and nobody at the bar turns their head. They don't even look nervous to turn their head. They're just like, Yeah, we saw Wonder Woman pole dancing last week, smashed off her ass. This is kind of a normal thing around here. Again, I love how less terrible and more childish his evil deeds are. You wanna get nuts? Come on! Let's get peanuts. Superman, please get better! Ricky sees Superman pleading for him to be good again. And we get what should be the most interesting part of the movie. He splits himself into two and evil Superman faces off with good Clark Kent. Now admittedly, this is a fascinating idea. You can have all the selfishness of what Superman could have been if he gave in to his temptations. Fight against all the good he is by not giving in to them. The problem is, it's literally that. Just a fight. And while it is cool to see, there's very little meat to it. Like, if Clark reminded him of the good they could accomplish versus Superman saying how much humanity doesn't deserve them. There's so many things you could do with this and they don't take advantage of any of it. However, like I said, the image of this is just so good, it does come across as a little cool. Even if at times, it is unintentionally hilarious. But I guess like Ralphie from A Christmas Story, you destroy his glasses and he goes apeshit, strangling evil Superman and finally merging into the true Man of Steel. He goes to stop our villains who have made a supercomputer in the middle of the desert. I just don't see why you can't balloon down like the rest of us. I just don't believe a man can fly. Every critical review after seeing this. So the funny thing is, while the other two films are good but have lame endings, this film is lame, but the ending's kind of fun. Most of the movie is aggressively boring, but this is where it goes silly in kind of the right way. They fire missiles at them that's so like a video game, they literally use a video game to track it. He makes it to their lair, resulting in this hilarious line delivery. Hi, honey. I don't know you, lady. I don't know you! And this supercomputer is surprisingly pretty badass. It has some really cool creative weapons that manage to really hurt Superman without just bringing a green rock towards him. Even if, again, it doesn't always make sense. Let's see how long you can carry on without any air. Yeah, there's plenty of air out in space. Congratulations, old buddy. You're going to go down in history as the man who killed Superman. Oh, come on, man. That's too close to home. There's the writers, the director. <laughs> when Gus has a change of heart and tries to turn off the computer, the computer is so powerful it goes Skynet and becomes self-aware, deciding it wants to kill everybody. Seriously, this damn computer should have been the main villain. <laughs> And in a scene I know scared almost every single child who saw it, the computer starts turning people into robots. <laughs> to this day, I still get a little freaked out whenever I see someone turned into a machine. It's stupid, I know, it's Saturday morning shit, it can't really happen. But this moment disturbed me so much, it still unnerves me. 
It's not even that long, only a few seconds. But you go to YouTube and you can see the tons of people that were creeped the shit out by this. I think it's how choppy, awkwardly, and even quietly it's done. It goes from bombastic music and screaming to just no score and the computer clicking. It's only a little bit of time, but my god, that little bit of time stayed with a lot of people. <laughs> the machine tries to wipe out everybody and is adapted to Superman's powers, so he goes to get the deus ex machina acid that was mentioned before. <laughs> Still don't know you, lady. <laughs> the machine tries to roboticize soups as well, but the acid breaks through, blowing up the computer. Thank you, brother. Thank you for several times trying to kill me. No, really, he lets Gus off because he saved him once and even manages to get him a job. Just, you know, no more of that almost destroying the world thing, young man. You really flew with him. Oh, you don't know about me and him? What did he even think was gonna be there? This movie's awful! The film reminds you Lana Lang is in it as Clark gets her a job at the Daily Planet. Oh, I see. Soup's as low as, but Clark has Lana. What am I supposed to be rooting for again? I like your sparkler. I couldn't believe it when Clark gave it to me. Clark gave it to you? Yes. <laughs> Let's end on the subplot you forgot was even a subplot, as well as Superman doing the right thing by ruining this guy's livelihood again. Hey, grazie. Can you or maybe fix it to clean screen king next time? He gets the reassuring smile of no refunds and the movie finally ends. And you know, I gotta say, returning to this film all these years later, it's even worse than I remember it. <laughs> Superman 4 is at least so bad it's good. This film, for all its strangeness, is fascinatingly dull. The humor is dead on arrival, it has ideas it barely touches the surface of, and it has way too many pointless subplots. I didn't even get to the one about Lana's ex because it impacted the story so little. The only time the film is kind of fun is in the last part. I really think this should have been about Superman fighting a supercomputer. Hell, maybe it goes all the way and does something like turns him into a robot. I don't know, Superman fighting a robot, Superman fighting himself as a robot. Just there's something freaky and cool you can do with that. But as is, this film is horribly written, horribly directed, and horribly conceived. It's a mess in every meaning of the word, and in no way lives up to the epicness of its predecessors. And what a waste of a comedic legend like Richard Pryor! There's no other way to describe this character than- DON'T CALL ME A BUM! I'M NOT A BUM! Ooh, I didn't know we could demand that! FIGHT THE POWER! Oh! Oh shit, he's gonna be mad! Yeah, let's get out of here! There's only one film left for Super Month, and doesn't look like it's gonna get much better. Wait, is that the Snyder Cut? Oh, that one's awesome! Superman's bad. We're continuing cameos for charity, and all this month, we're donating to Living Beyond Breast Cancer. Living Beyond Breast Cancer is fulfilling its mission to provide trusted information and a community of support to those impacted by the disease. They offer in-person experiences and on-demand emotional, practical, and evidence-based content that is meaningful to those newly diagnosed, in treatment, post-treatment, and living with metastatic disease. Having done this for over 30 years and having a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, this is definitely a great one to support. So if you want a cameo from me saying happy birthday or congrats or whatever, click on the link below and be giving to a good cause. Or if you're like, I hate your face, I don't want a cameo from you, still consider looking at this charity anyway. Whether you donate, volunteer, or just spread the word, you can do a lot in helping this wonderful organization out. So click on the link and give it a look. Thanks so much.